And so their next approach has been to look at history not back 600,000 years, but back 1,000 years, where we have more ways other than just these ice core samples that we can get at what was going on with the temperature and try to argue that somehow current temperature increases are unusual, they're unprecedented. If we can show that the amount the temperature has gone up over the last 50 years is unprecedented, has never happened before, then that might tell us something unusual has happened. and might imply, not necessarily, but it might give us more confidence that maybe man was causing the increase. The original IPCC report in 1990 showed this chart. This was their reconstruction of what temperature history has looked at like over the last thousand years. And this is very consistent with the history you read in history books, the anecdotal history. There's a medieval warm period, which we knew, know exists at least in northern Europe and the northern Atlantic, where Greenland was actually green. It was named that instead of glacier land for a reason, uh, where they were growing grapes in England, where harvests were good across Europe because there was a warm period of prosperity. In the, uh, in the 1200s. After that, they th- had reconstructed that temperatures that fell into something called the Little Ice Age in the 17th and 18th century. We know from anecdotal evidence, again, that this existed in Europe. We had canals and the Thames freezing. Uh, we had the freezing conditions at Valley Forge, etc., rising to a point today, which is probably, they thought at the time, was less than the, the maximum in the medieval warm period. And this was the reconstruction that historians have had for years. But this was inconvenient, uh, so to speak, for those trying to argue that man is somehow making catastrophic and unusual changes to the climate because there's nothing about the current temperature on this chart that looks unusual or dangerous or unprecedented. So along comes something you've probably heard of, which is called man's hockey stick. And what Michael Mann did was he used tree rings from a few sets of tree rings around the world, uh, some very old trees like bristlecone pines in the uh, Inyo National Forest in California and some other similar tree rings around the world. And he started with a hypothesis and said, when the world is warm, trees grow faster and the tree rings are wider. When the world is cold, trees grow less fast and the tree tree rings are narrower. So if I looked at a thousand-year-old tree and measured the tree rings, I can probably do a reconstruction of temperature history. And this is the chart he came up with, and you can see the hockey stick shape. Basically, he eliminated the medieval warm period. He eliminated the Little Ice Age, both of which we've always thought existed from historical record, and said that temperatures have been remarkably flat for the last 1,000 years, and it's only in the last 100 in the industrial area that temperatures have really leapt up. Now, there's a lot of statistical problems that have been uncovered in putting together this chart, so I don't want to attack a straw man. I'm actually going to use the updated version of this chart included in the fourth IPCC report, and that's this one. And unfortunately, it's overly complicated. The IPCC, or the the UN Climate Panel, has a tendency that when one of its analyses is challenged, the way it tries to show that it has a higher quality analysis is not to to redouble its effort on the quality analysis. It tends to want to show 12 of the same analysis on the same chart. And that's what we have here. We have about 12 of the same analysis, the same chart, of one of which you see it's labeled there on the upper left, MBH 1999. It's basically the original man hockey stick, but it's been joined by 11 other lines. The black line is different. The black is actually from the Hadley Center, the same line I had originally. That's a highly smooth version. And it's not from tree rings. It's actually from the instrumental temperature record. And we're going to come back to that in a second, but that's, that's kind of a critical point. But anyway, again, the mass of this analysis tends to say the same thing as man's chart is that maybe there was a medieval warm period, but it wasn't very high. Temperatures have been pretty flat over the last thousand years, and temperatures today look unusual. Look how that black line leaps up. But there's a couple of problems with this. One is, and I think any scientist outside of climate (laughs) looking at this would immediately spot the problem, is scientists often have to graph two sets of measurement records together because they just don't always have the luxury of having measurements over long periods of time from the same source. And in fact, that's what they've done here. They grafted tree rings uh, in all the colors to, to thermometers in the black. But scientists who do this are also very wary of doing so. It makes them nervous. And one of the things they look for is that, is there an inflection? Is there a major change in slope? Is there something unusual happen 
where we've grafted these two data sources together. And if that's happening, if the real change is happening right where we grafted those two data sources together, then they're suspicious that what they're seeing is not something from nature, is not an actual natural effect. They're suspicious that the effect is actually a, an artifact of grafting together two very different data sources. And in fact, you see that here. So take out the black line. Take out the temperature measurement, the thermometers. If we look at only tree rings, we don't really see a hockey stick. And in fact, yeah, there's a temperature increase recently, but that temperature increase happened from 1900 to 1950, before most folks think that CO2 had much of an effect on the temperatures at all, if any. So in fact, if we look at the period on this chart from 1950 to 2000, the period we might call the anthropogenic period or the suspected anthropogenic period, we don't see any temperature increase out of the tree rings. It's only by grafting on this completely different data source, thermometers, do we get the inflection, do we get the hockey stick. And so that makes us extremely suspicious of the data. The second thing is that it turns out the tree rings, and I think we all could, if we thought about it for 12 seconds, could come up with this conclusion, trees aren't really good thermometers. Um, remember what I would go back, that the hypothesis was that tree ring widths were primarily driven by temperature. But what about drought? What about water? What if for the same temperature, wouldn't we expect that if uh, the tree was much better watered in one year than the other, that tree rings would be wider despite having the same temperature? What if there's some kind of change to the soil or change to the, you know, how it's fertilized, etc.? So we would expect that tree rings maybe don't follow very linearly with temperature. They might not be very good thermometers. In fact, we see that. If you look in the middle in the gray period, that's typically what, what I would call the calibration period, is that all the tree ring data is, when you have a tree ring and it says it's three millimeters wide, nobody knows what temperature that is. You actually have to look at a series of data and compare it to temperatures at the same time and actually come up with a calibration factor, say one millimeter equals one degree Celsius or whatever. And that's what they've done in that period in the gray. That's the calibration period. That's why all the tree ring lines all s match up pretty well with the thermometer record is because they've been forced to do so. They've been set to equal the thermometer record for that period of time. We would expect them to be similar. But look outside the gray period. Look before, look after you see that the tree rings very quickly diverge from the thermometer record in those. What that's telling you is that when we force them to equal the thermometer, they equal the thermometer. But, but outside of those bands, the tree rings don't match thermometer readings very well. They're not very good temperature measurement devices. And so there's a lot of problems with this, with this tree ring data. Another interesting one is, is recently, you can see at the very end here where it says divergence there, is despite the fact that the thermometer record has gone up to five or six tenths of a degree, the tree rings haven't gone up. They haven't followed. In fact, several of them went down. Keith Briffa, who authored this section of the last IPCC report uh, in that light blue line, his line actually went way down, down to about negative 0.5. And to avoid the embarrassment of that, actually just truncated his data so nobody could see the problem. But there's a tremendous divergence problem where where, where if temperatures are really rising in the world, tree rings aren't showing it, which raises the question of whether tree rings were ever a good, very good thermometer. Several folks have done an analysis, and Mann, by the way, redid his hockey stick, and that's on the left, and it looks a lot like the first hockey stick, which I guess shouldn't surprise us. He's committed to his methodology. But this one's based on about 95 different proxies, and it's not just tree rings. He throws in some sediments and some ice cores and, and other different ways um, other than tree rings of trying to measure past temperature. And they have all kinds of pretty creative ways of doing it. But several people have looked at his analysis have found that really those same few uh, bristle cone pine trees in California plus a couple of sediment series that turn out to be deeply flawed, that if you remove those 18 or 20 series that have come under enormous criticism for their methodology, that the, the whole hockey stick, as you see on the right, goes away, taking away just that sort of one quarter of those proxies that have, have been questioned as having deep fundamental problems with how the proxies were gathered. If you do that, the whole hockey stick goes away. And in fact, there you see the medieval warm period. You see a cooler period recovering back to a warm period that's today that's really no warmer than, than they were in the Middle Ages, or in fact, cooler. And in fact, other folks,